Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and welcome to another episode of Community Conversations. Today, my guest is Randy Verbeck. Welcome to the show, Randy. Thanks for having me. Let's get started. Randy, tell us about yourself. So, uh, I was born in Fallon in 1991. My family, my mom, came right straight to Battle Mountain, and I was pretty much raised here till now. I, I haven't left. I'm still here. Never really left. I went to college in Utah for two years, but I came right back. Ended up going back into the mines, and now I'm a fourth generation miner in my family. Oh, okay. So, so yeah. what is it about Battle Mountain that keeps you here? Small town, quiet. I know everyone here. Everyone knows me. Everyone knows me as the big guy. You know, I've always been the big guy. My mom had to take my birth certificate to all the games, Little League football, just to prove that, yeah, he's this age, even though he's this big. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that that's pretty much how everyone knows me in this town, and I know pretty much most everyone here, and I just, I like that community atmosphere. Uh -huh. I like the quietness. I don't socialize very much. I just stick to myself. Okay. You know, when I first came to Battle Mountain, um, I don't know if you know the saying is, it, it's growing on me. You've heard that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I didn't like it for whatever reasons, and now I'm learning to, like, really like it. And I'm meeting people like you, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, where have you been? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so where did you come from, and why are you like it? Um, I'm liking it because I'm getting to actually make relationships with people. I'm from a bigger place, and you don't really get that other than your immediate family. But as far as like the community, I'm getting to know people um, more intimately, you know. And I, I like that. It's different and weird. In a city, you would just see someone, and you probably never see them again unless you get their phone number or have some sort of reason to hang out. Yeah. yeah, I don't even like, I don't like going to Elko. You don't? And that's not a big city. Uh -huh. I go to Elko and there's too many people. Uh -huh. There's too many people staring at me because I'm I'm 6'9", 300 pounds, right? And everyone's <laughs> just like staring at me like a gargantuan I am. <laughs> and I just want to get the heck out of Walmart and get back to Battle Mountain, put the groceries in the fridge and go on about my business. We were talking about as far as Battle Mountain goes, and you've seen some of the other episodes, and this is why, for this very reason, is why we started the show. We want the conversa that conversation to be more public. Um, and I guess one of your disagreements were like, there's things to do in Battle Mountain. Yep. So enlighten us. So I watched a few videos, and it was the mining keeps people here. It does in a sense because we all got to make money, right? That, that's how we make our money. But if you really, if you didn't like living here, you can go somewhere else and make money. You, you can't. You can go anywhere. But what keeps people here, I think, most of us, is the hunting. The hunting and the fishing and the, just the outdoor culture. We're talking taking your UTVs or ATVs out on the, on the roads and just having a good time. But mainly, I think it's a hunting. Because we got Area 6 just north of here. And I can even see my prime hunting spot right now. I can see it right now on that ridge line. Okay. <laughs> I have harvested so many deer on that ridge line. Put meat on my table every year. Right there. And that is why I mainly love living here. I, I sustain my family and I got plenty of meat in the freezer. Good meat. I know where it came from. I don't got to go to the store and get random stuff I don't know how it was processed mm -hmm. and that's for me as being like living growing up in the processed you know growing up in the city the fast paced this and you know it's not all flashy here and you know when you when we were talking you're 
you um, sparked my curiosity. And you're like, hey, you want to come hunting with us and shoot some stuff? And I'm like, yeah. I've never done that. But that would be awesome. Yeah. You know? That, that's one of my greatest pleasures is I, I hunt myself and I get the joy and everything of the actual shooting, the harvesting, butchering, cooking. I love that. But what I love more than anything is watching someone else do it that I'm teaching them how to do it. Even my wife, she, she never harvested deer till she dated me. And then I taught her what to do, I taught her how to shoot, and I'm watching the look on her face when she's looking through the scope, and I just see the joy. Right. And she was even pregnant at the time. <laughs> With her first harvest, she was pregnant, <laughs> and she still enjoyed it. And then another, I don't know if you know Danny Sullivan, he's, no. he's on my softball team. You, you, you've seen I probably him. met him, but I. Lakin? Yes, him? No, not him. It's Lakin's. What is it? Wife. Or, sorry. Lakin's husband, Danny. You don't know Danny? I probably do. I, there's okay. So many, I'm meeting so many people now. <laughs> I, I tried to get him in this interview, actually, but he's really? working. Yeah. Okay. Because Danny's a great guy, but I took Danny out. He's hunting. calling you out, Danny. I'm calling you out, Dan. <laughs> Calling you out, you're gonna be here. But uh, I took Dan out for a buck tag that he had, and he's never harvested, and he's had the the worst luck. He's he's gotten tags. I've taken him on, and just it hasn't worked out. I took him out for this one tag, and he had the buck in his sights, and it was old, mature, huge three by three, perfect opportunity. And I just saw the eyes on this guy, just. Huge eyes, mouth wide open, just happy as could be, but we couldn't get it. And he was still happy. Even though he couldn't get it, he was still happy. He was just proud to be out in the outdoors, having a good time. And that's one of the things as well is, you know, when you're so, you know, in your own world, you don't get to see other people's worlds, you know, and usually we pass judgment when we just need to kind of step out and we're like, okay, you know, I love filming. But I'm like, how can I get out and do a little more, you know, like just you inviting me to be on the show. And it's like, you know, like we have differences that'll enlighten us and go, wow, this is fun. You know, I've never done this. I've never played softball before. Yeah. Yeah. And then last year I played and that was my first time. And then this year coming again, I'm like getting better. And then I'm like, oh, this is fun. I never knew that I would like that, you know. And it was just someone's as simple as inviting me out, yep. you know. And I think that's how, like, professionals come about and all this crazy, awesome people. But people are awesome anyway, even if they're not professional. Mm -hmm. So are you inviting other people to go hunting with you? or um, Just a certain few that if they have a tag, it, it depends. I mean, you have people that are trophy hunters and... and I don't know if you know what that term means. Trophy hunters, in my opinion, are all they think about is how big the horns are on this oh, animal. I've, I've heard. The bigger, the better, right? Mm -hmm. In my family, from my grandparents, my mom, my dad, and me, I was not raised like that. Mm -hmm. I don't look at the horns. Don't get me wrong. If, hey, if it's big, I'm going to get it. But at the same time, I want meat on the table. That is my main goal. That is my trophy. So if I want to take someone out and they're focused on a trophy hunt, I won't take them. You can go spend all that time and effort just for horns. That makes no sense to me. What I want is either a mature animal or a healthy doe, a female, deer, antelope, whatever, have you. I want that to go on my table. Or even uh, if you see a deer with a strange side of his antlers like it just looks abnormal you need to get that out of the bloodline real quick you don't want that spreading out into the rest of the herd, right what is it so my me and my wife when i took my wife out when we were dating on her first hunt i found a buck in area 14 that was had a three horns that curly cued on the left side just weird and they're really small and short you don't want that so like, yeah, I'm going to take it, that. Is it infected or something? Nope. Or it it's just 
an abnormal growth. Uh, my grandmother told me when I brought it there, she lives right next door, had a odd hoof. Your grandma lives next door? Yeah. My <laughs> grandma and grandparents live right next door. Is that awesome? Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> awesome. But had an abnormal hoof, and they were thinking the, just the way it grew there, it's going to affect how it grows up here. I don't I'm not a biologist by any means, but. Have you seen it? Have they killed one and inspected? I haven't seen a weird one, personally. I've seen other ones, but if you're not there to see all the evidence, uh -huh. it's just hard. So you just take the word off yeah. just to make, yeah, because, yeah, so tell us some more about, like, the hunting process for people who don't know. Okay. I don't know nothing. Let's just say I don't know nothing. So let's, let's say what we're going to plan with you when we take you out, okay? My wife won a 270 Mossberg at the Chucker uh, Tournament last year. What's that? The Chucker Tournament. The Chucker Tournament, but the in two, town. two what? 270. It's a 270 caliber rifle. Oh, okay. So it's just a size of bullet, 270. Oh, okay. 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 So like 22, 270, oh, okay. 300. <laughs> I was in the military. 50. I don't know these. <laughs> I don't know these things. I just, I just get bullets out of this. <laughs> yeah, so she won a 270. I got to get a scope mounted on real quick. It's going to be arriving soon. She's going to sight that gun in. Uh -huh. I'll get a hold of you if you want to go. Yeah. So when she's sighting this in, I want to make sure the gun sighted in right for her. And I want to make sure she can make a clean harvest. I will not take her out if she cannot be comfortable with this gun. Mm -hmm. Until she's comfortable, then we'll go hunting. Because that is what is vital for me. It's this animal should not suffer. You make clean kill and you make your harvest. What would be an unclean kill and what's a clean kill? So I, I've seen it personally and it's, it, I hate seeing it so much. People will just shoot up the whole mountainside at these animals because they are not trained or they're too excited. They're not aiming for the vitals. They're not thinking correctly. Where are the vitals? So. If you, if you look like this, right behind the shoulder is where I am. That's the lungs. A little bit lower is the heart. That is where we aim. If you're a good enough shot, like my mother, excellent shot. She'll go for the neck, which is prime. But we're talking this small of a target versus this small. So <laughs> that is where the vitals are. And these people will just shoot up the country range when, when they're on the run and they're not snipers, you know what I mean? They're not, they're not trained for that kind of, right, right. but I've seen it and it just. You meet other people while you're out shooting? Yeah. I've actually went elk hunting in California plates. Watch this guy with a AR-10 just shooting up the countryside. It's a semi-automatic 308 just shooting up a storm and nothing. <laughs> I don't know what the heck he's shooting at. Nothing's coming out. And I'm like, what are you doing, man? That's not what you do. Well, what I do is I will not shoot unless I'm so comfortable at at least 300 to 400 yards. That's, that's, that's my target. And that's what I taught my wife. I'm going to teach my kids. That's our goal. Just smart decisions. Right. And I wish everyone had that philosophy, but they don't. Do you have, you have that across the board and everything that you do yeah pretty much for big game hunting like that with a rifle that's what it is we're talking chucker hunting that's a whole different what is chucker hunting you don't know what a chucker is no <laughs> chucker capital of the world right here you've never seen a chucker probably but i don't the gray ghosts the so, red-legged bandits i just want to i just want to give you a little bit of an example so if you put toast in a toaster machine, I'm like, how did you get the toast? I, like I'll look at toast and say, how did you get this? And I'll look at a toaster and, and, I, and I, you're gonna have to break it down for me. <laughs> okay, well, chucker, they're actually native to, I believe, Afghanistan. And they're introduced in Nevada, I don't know when, but they thrived out here, right? What they thrive on is just cheat grass, rocks and what water. do they look like they're gray they're probably about eh, about that tall and they got black stripes on their belly 
and they got red. I think it's red on their eyes. Sounds like a demon or yeah, something. It might be right? black. I, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, just look up a picture. You'll see it. But uh, And they uh, they hang out in flocks. Z, 98% of the time. And actually, this guy right here is my chucker hunting buddy. Copper. This dog. Copper? Yep. He's my chucker hunting buddy. And without this guy, I don't think I could hunt him. Because when you do shoot a bird this size, and they're flying a good 50 yards. It's a bird. Yeah. Oh, okay. When you're shooting at this bird, it goes down, right? Mm -hmm. You got all this terrain. You got rocks, you got holes, you got sagebrush, you got cheat grass. How are you, how are you really going to find it? Sometimes I can. That's what it is. Yeah. We're going to post that. Oh, can you see that? So imagine finding that 50 yards away out in the middle of nowhere. It's, it would be just, so wrong to just leave if you can't find it, right? They just they just migrate. They just, is there a lot of them? Is there... There's a ton of them. Man. There's a ton. You just got to find where they're at. And without that guy, whenever I get one down, dead bird, dead bird, he'll go find it for me. Oh, because when you shoot it, they just... They just go down and it's like, sometimes you can't find them. Because look at the color of them and they blend in. Yeah. No matter what. Have you ran into any, like, cougars or anything like that? I had a, one instance with mountain lion. It didn't mount to munch. I just happened to look over my right shoulder while I was hiking for chucker, and I saw a tail go over the ridge line. That alone just it scares the heck out of you, because you never know where they're coming from. And a late friend of mine that passed away, Turner, probably see uh, his dad, actually, had a run in with him and shot and harvested a mountain lion. He had a tag with a shotgun, just Ooh. with bird pellets. We're talking bird shells, not meant for a mountain lion. So Killed he, one? He got one because it was going after his dogs. And it would have went after him. Wow. It, as far as I remember the story, it's been a while, but I seen the mount he's got and yeah, just protecting his dogs, from what I remember. That's gotta be scary. That's yeah. A big one, right? Yeah. They're all pretty big. It doesn't even matter how big they are. The first thing they do is go for your neck. What are you gonna do against that, right? It's terrible. <laughs> it's nature, man. Right? So you're. I'm gonna. I'm gonna assume you're a nature man. Oh yeah. I'm. Let's see. Danny calls me the mountain man. Do you go and watch movies? I mean, like. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Hey, I'm a nerd too. I'm just. I'm just asking. I mean. Well, don't get me wrong. I like my digital, <laughs> my digital age. I played a lot of video games in my day. Right. But hunting, when I got older, it really just took hold and made more sense to me because, mm -hmm. you know, meat on the table makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Especially when my wife started making baby food out of venison, and potatoes. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know how she did it. So you she got did. a little. You got a little. Your babies are like Arnold walking around now. They're pretty big. They're big. <laughs> My daughter's four, and she's bigger than eight-year-olds. Are you serious? My twins. <laughs> one of them's a little scrawny, but the other one is an image of me. So, that's probably why I'm not as big, because... You weren't eating weren't eat, yeah. venison and <laughs> mashed potatoes. No, I was eating processed baby. food. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm not fully processed, actually. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we actually met at a softball game, and uh, conversation just, it just led into here we are. You know, and now we're going to go hunting together and everything like that. And, you know, so you live in Battle Mountain most of your life. Tell us a little bit about Battle Mountain as far as its growth, as far as what you would like to see, um, what you don't like seeing. Just... Hmm. Well, I want more awareness for the kids as far as kind of like self-preservation teaching, like learning like, for me, I never knew how to butcher an animal, how to cook. I never had a class like that. But even, it's embarrassing to say, I hate saying it, I didn't even know how a credit card worked until I met my wife. Oh, wow. I didn't know how bills and budgeting worked. Right. Why doesn't a high school have a class on that? I didn't have it. Mm -hmm. I didn't even have, like, chemistry. I had biology. 
my teacher even had me go out uh, catching crappie out of the pond for a biology class. That was cool. But chemistry, I, it was, I think just more education would be helpful. What I don't like seeing, it's hard to say because I don't get out that much. Mm. I mean, like even as I get older, you know, I'm going to college and I do like a video like this. And the teachers would be like, no, 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 you know? And I'd be like, oh, done, you know? Mm -hmm. And then something tells me to just, you know, calm down. Look at what they said. 99% is good, just this one correction. So basically, correct, being corrected. Like, help, there's healthy correction. It's not, oh, you're judging me. Yeah. Like, Please don't do that because I'm looking out for your well-being. Versus just kind of like being judgmental. There's a difference. Yeah. Hey man, I care about you. Don't do that. Hey man, I'm sorry. I actually made a mistake. Yeah. That's what I'm learning, anyways. Yeah, cool. So, is there any last things that you want to say? Battle Mountain. I just think Battle Mountain is a great place to live, to work, raise your kids. Low cost of living. It's it's a great place. People might look down on it, but I'm never gonna move to Elko, Twinnamucca, Reno. Heck no, not Reno. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stay here and live my life, raise my kids the best so, I can. So if you live in Battle Mountain, I guess what I'm getting from it is it's not for everyone, right? Yeah, some people are not going to be happy living, that's for sure. And some people are you know, going to make the best of every situation. Yeah. And a lot of people here are going to help each other. That's what we've always done. That is what I noticed. Yeah, that's, the, that's the way I noticed. Battle Mountain does come together when they all do certain things. So, all right, we appreciate you uh, being on our show. It's been fun, exciting. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for having me. All right, thank you.